Alrighty, uh, we're closing in on the end of the chapter, but of course, uh, well, we got more vector stuff to deal with first. All right, so the statement is a plane wave traveling through vacuum in the z direction encounters a perfect conductor occupying a region z greater than zero or z greater than zero and reflects back. E of z of t is equal to E naught cosine kz minus omega t minus cosine kz plus omega t in a z hat direction for z less than zero. A, find the accompanying magnetic field. B, assume B equals zero inside the conductor and the current K on the surface Z equals zero and find the current K or the surface current uh, on the surface Z equals zero by invoking the appropriate boundary conditions. C, find the magnetic force per unit area on the surface and compare it and compare its time average with the expected radiation pressure. All right, not too long of a question, but definitely can get messy. So let's start. Here we have, since E cross B points in the direction of propagation, go back to pointing theorem and which way it points, uh, we have B is equal to E naught C over uh, E naught C times cosine, all that stuff, in the Y hat direction. Um, again, what we need to show here is that because we were told that it was propagating in the Z direction and E of X was in the uh, X direction, or E was in the X direction, we get z from x if we take the curl of y. Hence, we get this thing. Okay, so not too hard, but a little bit of inspection there, not much of mathematical stuff. The boundary condition needed is 1 over mu naught, or 1 over mu 1, b1 parallel minus 1 over mu 2, b2 parallel is equal to k cross n, or the uh, cross product. Okay, so this is the boundary condition. However, what we see here is that the n or the way of the propagation is in the negative z direction since it's less than zero and uh here b2 doesn't do anything it doesn't transmit so b2 is zero and b we happens in the vacuum so it's at mu naught and we need to evaluate it at z equals zero so if we do that we get uh that k cross negative z hat is equal to one over mu naught e naught over c Cosine of negative omega t plus cosine of omega t, but since cosine is an even function, that negative sign doesn't matter, and we're able to join it up together to get 1 over mu naught uh, times eps, or e naught over c times 2 cosine omega t in the y hat direction. In order to solve for k, we have to uh, do a clever trick by invoking the back cab rule. Okay, so we take another cross product to have a triple product and use back cab. Easy enough. Well, what possible vector could we use? Well, we know that the cross product of any two unit vectors that are the same goes to zero. So we'll cross the k cross negative z hat with the z hat uh, unit vector. And uh, we do that to both sides clearly. And on the left hand side, we invoke the back cab rule. And uh, what we see here is that, um, rather, what we see here is that the dot product of z hat and k go to zero since they're perpendicular. And what we see is that the k with the dot product of z and negative z go to negative one. Also note that z cross y is what we're taking the cross product of and that is negative x. So the negative signs cancel and we can quickly find k using the back cab rule instead of trying to solve some weird integral formula. It's just nasty and gross and not really time efficient. So do this and we see immediately that k is equal to e2 e naught over mu naught c cosine omega t in the x hat direction. Good. We like this. All right. Now c, the force per unit area, is f equal k cross b average. Okay. Well, if we're looking at the average field, we just take the field that we found in part a and multiply or yeah, part a for or excuse me, yeah, part A multiplied by half, since we know that the average field will condense to two copies of it, and then we get rid of it. So we need to take K, which we just found, and the average, hence the one half, canceling with the two at C equals zero, and uh, just plug it on through. Uh, we see that we get two copies of uh, cosine omega T, so we get a square there. We have two uh, E naughts and two Cs, so we put all the constants out and we're left with x cross y which we know goes to z 
as highlighted in red, C squared is actually equal to epsilon naught mu naught. Uh, so when we substitute it in and thus the mu naughts cancel. So we're actually left with a force per unit length, I believe is what they wanted. Uh, yeah, unit area, excuse me. Uh, of two epsilon naught mu naught, or excuse me, epsilon naught e naught squared cosine squared omega t in the z at direction. F average, of course, if we average this out, the cosine goes to zero over a full average cycle. So what we do there uh, is put one half in for the cosine squared, and that cancels with the two. Uh, and then you see that uh, we're left with just epsilon naught e naught squared. And this is twice the radiation pressure and that we saw in equation 9.64, but that was for a perfect absorber, whereas this is a perfect reflector. And again, we said earlier that the perfect reflector has to take into account twice the momentum, one for the incoming and one for throwing it out. So that makes total sense.